What if I told you that for the rest of your life, you never have to fall in love with the wrong type of man ever again? What if I also told you that in order to do that, all you need is five simple steps? If that sounds impossible to you, don't worry. On today's show, we're gonna be discussing how to stop falling in love with the wrong men. That way you can ensure that you never get played by another dishonest or sneaky man ever again. Information is king. So let's imagine this big round head is you. And let's imagine this big bobble head over here is the man. You have your vision, which is like this. Now inside of this vision, you can see that he's nice. You can see that he's caring. You can see that he's charming. All these amazing things about this man are sitting right inside of your vision here, okay? Let's say you and him go on two or three dates. And in the process of these two or three dates, you get an opportunity, he pulls the chair out for you, he opens the doors for you, he compliments you. This is all the character traits and personality traits that are within your vision of this man. However, what you don't see and you don't understand a lot of times is that outside of your vision also exist parts of his personality that you have yet to meet. So in these outside per parts of his personality over here, he could be mean. In this outside part of his personality, he could be nasty, not the good kind of nasty, okay? Disrespectful, okay? Angry really easily. And so you have all of these different parts of his personality that exist outside of your vision here, okay? And because they all exist outside of your vision, meaning outside of your experience with him so far, you are of the belief that this, all of what you've been observing is him. And that's the only part of, your pers of his personality that you base your commitment to him off of. The problem with that though is that eventually as time goes on, right? And as you meet him in different circumstances, you get to know him in uh, different ways and you see him in places other than just an Italian restaurant slurping spaghetti with him on a Saturday night, your vision eventually expands over time. So your vision becomes like this, but here's the problem. By this time that you are now having a full picture of who he is, you have already made the decision to sleep with him. Precisely why I tell you that information is king. Because one of the ways that you're gonna get to this point where you are eventually able to see the full picture of everything that he consists of. Then when you get all of this information, when your vision is full and you know as much as you can possibly know about this man in multiple different circumstances and situations, then you make a decision to sleep with him because you can ensure that after you sleep with him, he will be the same person that he was when you met him on the first date. Number two, you want to start observing storylines. See, this guy's ex here. So you're asking him the story of how did you guys end your relationship? I want to get a better understanding of that. So now, when he's describing this end result, which is the breakup, let's just say for the sake of example, he tells you that this breakup happened, they got to this point because of distance. And he describes to you this really sad sob story about how him and his ex were distant because he got a new job in a new town. And in that process, they just kind of drifted apart and it was basically mutual. And it's such a sad, tragic sob story. <laughs> But this is where I want you to start getting good and not getting complacent when it comes to understanding men and asking questions. You don't just allow a guy to tell you one story of the breakup in 30 seconds on the first date and then never ever touch that storyline ever again. Why? Because on those first few dates, when you're getting to know people, people are gonna skew things, they're gonna omit things so they don't look bad. And let's say two months down the line, you're talking about the relationship and why it ended. And you're like, yeah, you know, I'm just worried because I don't wanna take this job. I don't want. I don't know if I wanna take this job because I know you were talking about distance affected your past relationship. Let's just say for the sake of example, he's like, it wasn't really the distance. It was more like the one time we went on vacation uh, we had a huge fight. So then you're thinking, wait a second, it wasn't distance, it was the big fight. And then you're like, wait, so why, why did you guys have this big fight on vacation? I mean, it's vacation. And then he says, oh, well, you know, this friend from high school, I went to go hang out with her a couple of times. I went to the movies 
and you know me and her ended up kissing and it was just kind of like a friendly thing and you know I didn't want it to happen and she saw some of those messages that we kissed when we went to the movies so now you realize through the process of getting uh, the storyline multiple times it wasn't really the distance that broke them up it was the cheating that led to the fight maybe from the distance right uh, but it was a whole different story or there were some additional pieces here that weren't confirmed so by the time you actually break this down you see how when you gather more information and you start building a storyline and you don't get satisfied with the first answer you can now complete a storyline that seemed like it could have been perfectly consistent from the beginning and realize that there are some inconsistencies here and I promise you as you dig and you dig and you dig into the inconsistencies you will eventually find gold which is your truthful answer so never expect or anticipate that people are just going to be super open and honest with you from the very beginning okay but the reality of it is when you meet guys and you first start dating them or you or you first start seeing them they're obviously going to want to make themselves look as good as possible so when they want to make themselves look as good as possible they're not going to be inclined to tell you absolutely everything and even the ugly truths that would make you uninterested in them so you have to be aware of that that way you don't get satisfied with hearing the answer one time and feel like you never have to think of it ever again. Number three, you're gonna get answers with games. You're gonna get two bags, two plastic bags, two garbage bags, two whatever bags, okay? It doesn't have to be huge bags, just regular bags. Now, you're gonna have scrap pieces of paper because what I want you doing is you guys are gonna be writing on these scrap pieces of paper 10 things that you love about your relationship and 10 things that you don't love about your relationship that you really dislike, okay? Now, with this game, you can plug and play any sort of truth that you want to know. So let's say for the sake of example, you and this guy have only been talking for a couple of weeks. So having a game talking about what you love and don't love about the relationship might not necessarily be appropriate or the right amount of time. You can then make it 10 things that you loved about your past relationship and 10 things that you hated about your past relationship. Now, the reason I think it's best for you to do it in game version is because when you make it game version, you disarm men because men are also protective of their feelings and emotions and especially if they're trying to trick you or play you it, they really want to be protective of that and even if they're being genuine with you guys will try to protect their heart and not tell you how they really feel or what they really think games are a great way to make it a fun little activity that both of you guys can have fun with and you'll be able to know more about him now let me break down to you in an analogy or in a visual why you want to be doing this with games. His feelings are hiding behind this massive, massive wall here. And in order for you to get access to this feeling, these feelings, you're going to have to reach your hand around these feelings. You got long hands to try to get here, okay? But in order to get here, you're not going to be able to reach that far. You don't have arms that long. You're not Elastigirl. So you're going to need to get him to bring these walls down, okay? Right? And the thing about it is, unfortunately, if you come out and tell men, hey, tell me exactly how you feel, exactly what you want, exactly why you're here, exactly what your intentions are, they will not bring down this wall. You will not be able to reach around it and you'll never be able to access how he truly feels okay so in order to do that we have to get him to bring this wall down so that you can better understand hey who is this guy that i'm actually dating and does he actually feel the same way that i feel are we on the same page do we want the same things or does he feel very differently than me or Am I confused about the guy totally and overall? I'm trying to help you expedite the process of gathering information so you can come to that determination. Fourth point here, you're going to be gathering opinions. This is so important. I wanna give you guys an example. Let's imagine you and your friends are going to a cottage. And at this cottage, you're trying to decide this time what cereal would be best to buy 
for everyone at the cottage. Now you only have a limited budget, so you're gonna have to pick one cereal. Now let's say for the sake of example, you have uh, 10 friends at this cottage. So you ask your best friend, right? The friend that's closest to you in the friend group, and you say, hey, uh, what cereal do you like best? And she says, oh, I really like Fruit Loops. Gets a vote here. And you're thinking, okay, Fruit Loops sounds good. I'm assuming everyone else likes Fruit Loops and we'll just get Fruit Loops because that'll probably be the one that everyone likes. In the process of you asking another person, they say they like Frosted Flakes. And then you get two people who say they like Frosted Flakes. And you're like, hmm, okay. I thought Fruit Loops would probably be the winner because I assumed everyone likes Fruit Loops, but I guess maybe Frosted Flakes is the winner. So you're on your way to the store to buy Frosted Flakes and you ask in the chat, you're like, hey guys, uh, what does everyone like? I'm just on the way, I'm gonna get some Frosted Flakes so I know everyone probably likes Frosted Flakes. Just wanted to make sure Frosted Flakes is good with everyone. But you've only asked three people in the group, right? But you're assuming, huh? If I ask one, it's Fruit Loops, the other one is Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes will probably be, be fine. And then when you mention this in the group chat, everyone in the chat say, no, no, don't get Frosted Flakes. Are you an idiot? Are you an idiot? This, you gotta get this cereal instead. You're like, what? What cereal? What cereal does everyone want? And they all say, right, when, every, when all the other seven people take a vote, right, they say, we all want Cinnamon Toast Crunch, right? When you actually get a survey of what everyone was interested in or what everyone liked, you then understood that what everyone liked was actually drastically different than what you anticipated everyone would like. So now, what is the actual purpose of this and what does this even mean? Gathering opinions is so important for this exact reason. You can actually make a mistake of thinking everyone likes or, or, or sorry, everyone feels a particular way when in reality, everyone feels a very different way. And until you gather opinions, truthful opinions from those people, will you then realize that actually what I thought it was is not what it actually is. So the same thing happens with you in your relationships. You can end up dating men, and then in the process of you going on one or two dates with them, you can build your own opinion of, oh, he's so nice, he's so caring, he holds chairs out for me. He's amazing to me. He's like literally my Prince Charming out of a Disney princess movie. And you build that understanding of what you think he is. But after you gather opinions from friends, from family, from coworkers, okay, right? And you allow yourself to be open to the idea that maybe I don't know everything about this guy. And you start asking questions. You go to his coworker, you say, oh, what is he like at work? You know, how does he work? Is he a good boss? Is he a good coworker? And you're hearing, oh no, he's real mean and nasty to everyone. He backstabs everyone. And you're like, oh. And then you go to his friends and even his friends are like, yeah, you know, we, we like John, but you know, sometimes John can be a bit nasty to people. You know what I mean? And then you have a conversation with his brother and his brother says, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I love John, but you know, sometimes he can be a handful and sometimes, you know, he can uh, really be a, a, a vengeful type of guy, if you know what I mean. So, and now when you're getting opinions from the coworkers and you're getting opinions from the uh, friends and you're getting opinions from the family members, you're seeing everyone likes Cinnamon Toast Crunch. You thought everyone liked Frosted Flakes, meaning you thought that your opinion of him was like, oh, he's Prince Charming, he's everything I've ever dreamed of, he's everything I've ever wanted in a relationship. But as you met all the other people in his life that have known him for more time and had more experiences with him, you're now getting and painting a picture and an understanding that, oh, actually, the guy that I've been meeting is not in line with the guy that everyone else knows. Now, Here's the very important thing to note about that. Your experience will be truthful still. And even that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the way he treated you is disingenuous. But what that does mean is you're more likely to encounter the type of person that everyone else has come to know over the course of time than you are to continue encountering this amazing man that you've been meeting, uh, you know, that's like your Prince Charming. Why? Because when you survey everyone else that has, that has known him longer than you, you realize that all of those people that have known him for an extended amount of time, they all feel very similar about him. 
So you might be experiencing the honeymoon phase and the happy phase in the beginning, but rest assured, there is a high likelihood that eventually you will experience him in the same way that all of his other friends, coworkers, and family members are experiencing him. You need to stop revealing your moves here. Let me break this down for you. Let's imagine a scenario in which Keith Lee, right? Keith Lee, he's a food critic, okay? Like an Instagram, TikTok food critic, okay? When Keith Lee really likes food at a restaurant and he posts about it on his TikTok page. There are hundreds of people that come to that restaurant to eat that food because they trust Keith Lee's, you know, uh, palate and his uh, taste buds that if he likes it, that must mean that spot is really good. Now, if he also takes a crap on it and he says that it's horrible, that place usually goes out of business, okay? Because nobody wants to come there anymore. To say, let's imagine a scenario in which this food critic Keith Lee calls ahead of time and says, hey, I'm Keith Lee, I'm just letting you know I'm about to stop by your restaurant in exactly 45 minutes. And when I get there, I'm gonna order the brisket, I'm gonna order the mac and cheese, and I'm gonna order the cornbread. And he hangs up the phone. And they're like, oh my God, Keith Lee's coming to our restaurant. We gotta make sure we get the brisket going, we gotta get the mac and cheese going, and we gotta get the cornbread going. So, by the time Keith Lee gets there, right, uh, the food has been prepared for Keith Lee. Why? Because the restaurant knows Keith Lee is coming. So they prepare food specifically for Keith Lee and when Keith Lee bites into that piece of food, Keith Lee is like, oh my God, this is amazing. And he makes a whole video about it and it goes viral that this is the most amazing cornbread, amazing brisket and amazing mac and cheese he's ever had. So naturally, because Keith Lee posts about it, there is a line around the block, okay? Hundreds of people lining up to get the brisket, get the mac and cheese and get the cornbread. But what Keith Lee didn't factor in and what you didn't factor in because now you're coming to a restaurant because you heard Keith Lee talking about it, because they prepared him a specific meal, that's not representative of how they will prepare all the other meals on a regular average day. So when you come to the restaurant and you try that brisket, that mac and cheese and that cornbread, it's horrible. Why? Because that restaurant isn't interested in making good brisket, cornbread and mac and cheese for every customer that comes in but they are interested in making good cornbread, mac and cheese, and uh, brisket for Keith Lee, the food critic that will post about their restaurant and either put them in business or out of business, okay? Are you following what I'm saying? So, simply from Keith Lee calling ahead of time, that drastically changes the outcome because now you're at a restaurant trying horrible food simply because Keith Lee called ahead of time instead of just what doing what he should have do done, which is come anonymous, okay? which is actually, and I'll give a shout out to Keith Lee, that's actually what he does. Remember, you're always trying to extract information, but when you're trying to extract information, the last thing you wanna prepare someone for is the fact that you're trying to extract information. What you wanna do instead is distract them from the fact you're trying to extract information by making them feel like I ask you all of these questions because I so interested in you and your life and I love hearing you talk, it turns me on. And as they yap more and they talk more, it'll get harder and harder to keep the truth hidden from you. And men can trick you easily when they prepare their answers for you, they prepare what they want you to observe or see and they get a chance to make sure that that's curated in a way that makes them look really good.